Okay, today I'm going to do a video on uh, plating uh, carburetor parts. Uh, a lot of people are wondering how uh, how it's done, how you get the chromate finishes on there. So I'll show you my small uh, plating tank setup that I've been running for, I don't know, 10, 12 years. And, you know, basically you can see the, the bench I built. It's got storage underneath. That's my uh, pump to keep moving the fluid around. It also has a filter on it. Uh, this is my rectifier. I picked this thing up years ago on eBay on the cheap. And uh, the tank, the tank is a, I think it's a 10, 11 gallon tank in here. And uh, this is the plating solution. So what we'll do is uh, I'm going to fire up the pump and you can see how the uh, solution starts to circulate. You can see when you're plating uh, you got to have movement of the of the uh, you know the liquid and uh, keeps it circulating and also this particular off the uh, filters it at the same time. So what I'm basically going to do is uh, we're going to do a quadrajet uh, body. Now this body is, uh, this is the top, it's all been prepped. Uh, you know first I clean it in carburetor cleaner and then uh, I put it in my bead blast cabinet which I use a very fine uh, pottery uh, grade uh, glass bead so it uh, it doesn't uh, make it too rough. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, hook our our hanging devices in. This one here is for the anode. The anode is the material that's actually going to be plating onto the, the carburetor. And they call the uh, Part you're plating on the cathode. So what I'll do is I'll hang that in the solution. This is the anode zinc. We're plating with zinc here. And I just, you know, you got these little bags to keep all the crap from falling into the tank as it uses up this plate, just hangs on, hanging on to here. I take my uh, negative lead, clamp it on the uh, cathode which is the top of the carburetor. Positive lead goes on the anode. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn my uh, rectifier on. Power. This is the output. And right now, you know, it's light on constant current. And just, you know, this, this amperage and volts, I don't consider myself with the volts, I'm looking for the amps. And this is a you know fairly large piece, so I'm going to crank it up to about three and a half amps to start the plating. And you know, all this stuff, you know, I've been doing this for years, and uh, there's formulas for calculating how many amps uh, you should be running on, you know, square inches. and. You know, I just, I eyeball this stuff. I've been doing it so long, I know just about where to set it. You don't want to plate this stuff too fast. Otherwise, it'll start, you know, getting pimple bubbles on it. And uh, usually you can tell that when you start seeing a lot of bubbles swarming on the piece you're plating. But the uh, piece is already starting to, to get some color going on it.
And what we'll do is we'll leave this plate for a while. And the reason that I have to plate the bodies is because we're gonna we're gonna put a, a dichromate conversion coating on here. That's where you get the uh, that uh, yellow color, iridescent looking color on there. Uh, people always call this uh, cadmium, but uh, that's uh, not correct. Uh, the conversion coating is uh, is applied on the item after plating, and it's just an additional uh, corrosion inhibitor. Uh, the reason why people used to gave it the name cadmium plated is because I'm using zinc to plate these materials. And uh, they used to use, uh, on all the metal parts and stuff, they used to use cadmium plating, which is a, another metal, and it plates out shiny like zinc or tin. And it's, uh, it's actually got a better corrosive property than uh, zinc does. Uh, they kind of got away from the cadmium because it's a cyanide-based solution, and most of it all went to uh, zinc plating and still using the dichromate conversion coating on there. Uh, so when people start talking about cadmium plating, you know they're, they're thinking of that yellow color or the bluish colors on there. It's, uh, it has nothing to do with the with the cadmium. It's a it's a conversion that's going to be applied after the item is plated. Now originally, when these uh, bodies were cast, they're cast out of something they they uh, that I found that they call it a Zamac three. Uh, uh, zinc formula. I guess it's got zinc and a little bit of this and that in there, predominantly zinc, and then they dye inject these so they can get that super fine casting without voids. Uh, when these were 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 newly cast, uh, the zinc was real shiny and prominent on the outside layer. So they would, after they made these uh, carburetors and did their machine work and whatever on them. Then they would just take them and immerse them in the dichromate solution, and it would take to it. But what I found is that these castings have gotten so old, uh, something has went on where the uh, zinc isn't present, and I can't just directly clean them and dip them in the dichromate. It, it doesn't adhere. So what I do is I put a coat of zinc, I plate over the, the, the body material, and then it accepts the dichromate, which I'll show you how that's done after this plate's out. Okay, while we're waiting for the carburetor to uh, get done, I'll uh, tell you about the uh, sodium dichromate uh, conversion coating uh, chemical. Basically what it is, sodium dichromate is a powder you can buy. You can find it on eBay. It's really cheap. And uh, I've got about, uh, I don't know, gallon and a half in this bucket. I've had this bucket, this solution for, I don't know, six, seven years. And uh, the only thing I ever do to it, when the uh, color isn't biting good, I add just a little bit, you know, like a half an ounce of, uh, of uh, acid, uh, sulfuric acid to it. And that kind of, that's what's kind of making it grab. But, uh, the formula for this is uh, is uh, use uh, 10 ounces per gallon. I'm reading this from my notes of uh, sodium dichromate, and uh, that's per gallon, and uh, half an ounce of uh, sulfuric acid per gallon. Sulfuric acid, you know, is battery acid. You can buy that. Uh, in uh, containers from Napa, uh, and, and that's the uh, the mixture. So if you want to make two gallons, you double it. And uh, two gallons is good because for carburetor bodies, you know, you need a little depth to go in there. And uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, this is a part that I've previously plated. You know, this is the bracket that holds the choke pull off and goes in and operates the choke. Now this was bead blasted and plated, and it's all ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to immerse it in the chemical. I just put it in, swash it around a little bit. And you can see I pull it out, let the stuff drip off. I usually got my rinse bucket right next to her, but I got it on the floor, so I'm going to rinse it.
and this is it after it's rinsed. Now that's the color. Now what I'll do is I'll let this dry and I'll show you uh, a picture of it when it's uh, it's dried off and you start seeing those iridescent colors on there. And I took this part outside so I hope the colors show up what I'm talking about. You can see the hues reddish yellow in there and that's the dichromate conversion coating that's put on there and like I say this coating was strictly uh, put on there for an additional uh, corrosion inhibitor it would give that coating up first and it would give up the zinc or cadmium what was below but that's how you get that that part to look like that okay we're checking our tank progress and uh, I'll pull this up a little bit. You can start seeing how the the zinc is taken on there. This usually takes, you know, I'm going to probably say, uh, you know, with the size of my tank and stuff, uh, it's probably about a 15-minute process to uh, to get it coated really good. And you have to keep moving it around, uh, changing positions. You know, sometimes I put two anodes in, one on the back side, move this towards the middle, and use a jumper wire. And, you know, that makes it a little bit quicker. Uh, I didn't want to set up a second anode. It'll work with one, just takes a little longer. But I keep moving it around because you, you get reflections off of these uh, different angles, and the plating will go, like, kind of flat. So the object is to keep moving it around and uh, and uh, change the, that reflection angle from the, uh, the current to uh, make sure it all plates good. Okay, as we're sitting there watching the uh, park plate, like watching grass grow, we just go over a couple things. Uh, you know, to do this plating, uh, it's, it's not a cheap uh, thing to do you know the small setup I have here with you know the chemicals are very expensive uh, you know tank pumps and all that stuff I probably have close to a thousand dollars here and like I say I've had this system for many years the solution I is original I bought the solution from Caswell plating shit back probably when they first started and uh, I've never changed the solution. All I do is when it starts evaporating, I add distilled water to it just to keep the level up. And uh, you know, these uh, anodes are uh, kind of expensive. They go a long way, but you have to use you know uh, plating grade anodes. They're, they're, it's the purity. If you just take a piece of zinc bar for from a, you know a boat or something like that, it plating will be really coarse because there's a lot of impurities in the uh, in the anode so you have to use plating anodes and uh, this uh, zinc solution periodically you have to add this brightener to it so it plates bright otherwise it'll plate real flat and uh, that bright brightener is pretty expensive it's forty something dollars a, a quart but it, it goes a long way I mean you can do a lot of parts uh, with that, a lot of carburetors, and uh, the uh, the other dichromate color you guys have probably seen. You know, GM used it sometimes. Was a uh, it was almost like a bluish color, bluish silver. Now that I used to have that solution mixed up a long time ago. Just had, haven't had much call for it, so I don't even uh, do it unless somebody would want it. Uh, but that solution makeup is uh, 0.8 ounces per gallon of uh, sodium dichromate and uh, you use nitric acid versus the sulfuric acid and the nitric acid is like 3.2 ounces per gallon and you can double that for two, two gallons and uh, because of that different acid will give you that bluish color versus the sulfuric acid and uh, those chemicals are the same thing once you mix them up. Uh, 
Chaswell sells a uh, conversion coating uh, on there, and I, I tried some of that years ago, and it didn't last. I mean, it was pretty expensive, and after I ran it for a week or so, it, it lost its ability to uh, do it. And uh, I found this formula in an old plating book and uh, mixed it up their way, and I've been using it, like I say, you know, seven years, and I've never, I've never added no more sodium uh, dichromate powder to it, just a little bit of acid here and there. Okay, what we're going to do is uh, we have the top of the carburetor uh, plated. I've got it in my rinse bucket down below. You've got to rinse it really good. But uh, that's basically with the zinc plating on it. So what we're going to do is on these uh, carburetor bodies, I usually dunk it really quick like that, shake it off, go to my rinse tank. Now you can see the color on this. I want it just a little darker, so I'll go in a second time. This is basically the color I'm looking for, right here. I'll dry this off and uh, leave it uh, hardened up and you can see the, the color on it. If, if you go in like a third time, it'll start getting too dark, because this will actually darken up a little bit as it set, sets up. Okay, what I've done is I've put the main body of the carburetor in. There it is. And I've uh, added one more anode. It'll, it'll plate faster and it'll uh, get rid of some of the reflections if you're plating just from one direction. You'll start getting shadows around uh, parts that are protruding. So I add the second anode, it'll plate quicker and it should give me a, a, a more even finish. But I'm constantly, you know, I'll change positions of this. You know, I'll tighten the wire up I'll add a hook wire and pull it this way or that way, you know, for the plating, just to, you know, so it, it all plates evenly. I'm taking this piece outside. It's it's drying up pretty good, just to show you guys the, the color of it. Now, you got to let this stuff uh, harden up for about a day, because otherwise you start pawing on it, you'll start you know rubbing it off it has to kind of like adhere to the metal so I usually you know you usually let it set around about a day before I start assembling these and stuff and this also you know this shininess of it, it it'll die down it won't take long you know two three weeks and it'll tone down in color Okay, we have the body plated. Got a coat of zinc plating on it. And we're gonna do the same process as we did the top. I'm gonna go in once, swish it around a little. And go to my rinse tank. One more time.
and that's basically our color. You got to make sure that you uh, do each piece the same amount of time, otherwise one is going to be darker than the other. And you can also, if you buy like bolts from Ace or wherever, and you wanted to uh, dichromate them because they're all zinc plated. This is a uh, like a bolt from a hardware store. The only thing I do with these is I take a piece of scotch Bright and I go over it all and scuff it because the zinc plating they put on here, you know, these things have been sitting around for who knows how long. Uh, they form a little oxide on them. So when you scuff it, you knock that oxide off so that the uh, dichromate will bite into the zinc. That's really all you got to do on, on uh, nuts and bolts and washers and stuff you buy from uh, like the hardware store. Okay, this is uh, pretty much the uh, carburetor body finished. You can see the color on the top and the bottom are good. And these are all the parts, uh, the linkages and stuff that have been plated and chromated. You know, uh, the springs are just zinc plated and stuff the way it came from the factory. But uh, this is how you get the uh, the color on the bodies and the uh, all the other metal parts. Like I say, this is not a uh, you know something you can brew up from under your sink chemical-wise and start doing. But uh, just for people's knowledge, this is how it can be done.